going to be showing you how to set up a Flask app and deploying it via Google Cloud. Uh, so first step is, is that you're going to need Python installed, you need VS Code, and you need to know what a virtual environment is. I wrote all that stuff in a blog post in the link below, so give that a read if you don't know, or Google some of those basics. Um, so we're going to get started first by creating our virtual environment. So I'm going to just python-m, uh, vn, and then vnn. So what this is, is that Python is making a virtual environment, and we're calling it environment, or env for short. All right, generate an environment. Let's give it a second here. There it goes. All right. And then uh, the how we get into the virtual environment is that you're going to hit env and then hit tab. It auto fills those details for you in VS Code. Then capital S C R for scripts, and then A C T for activate. It's going to be env bin on Mac OS. All right, we're in the virtual environment, which is indicated by this little uh, parentheses in the lower left. All right, first thing we're going to do is pip install Flask. Uh, if you don't know what Flask app is, basically it's a library made up of other libraries that lets you run a web server. So I'm going to show you how to do that really quick. So in this little button in the upper left, we're going to create a file, call it app.py. And then finally, we're going to come here and import Flask from uh, our library here. I'm not going to import all that other stuff. Just going to leave that there. And then we're going to initialize our app. So we're calling Flask right here, and it's going to initialize the app. So it's going to use the code from the library, uh, call, it, call it when we run the code. And then we're going to do at app.route. So in the server, we're creating a URL route or this is a home route here. And then we are going to then hit enter and then create a function called hello world, which is going to act as like an endpoint that will return hello world when we go to that URL. So if you could imagine that in this line, we could do slash API version one slash hello world, for instance, and then your, you know, your address, so 27.0, Point zero one slash yeah basically this would be the URL address that you would access short little tutorial there we're just going to go back to basic home and then if we need at the end of it if underscore name dot equals name true all right and then app run dot debug true so this is a simple hello world flask app, right? Uh, we are just gonna make sure the code works and that Python works because you always wanna check that it works. So we're going to do Python, dat, uh, Python app dat, dot py. Okay, it ran, we can hold down control and left click here. Okay, we know the flask app works here now. All right. Then we're going to pip install some basic stuff. So pip install dot env because we want to call uh, environmental variable. So in deployment, you need to pass secret keys for databases or integrations like Google sign up or Apple sign up. So um, basically the simple dot env file is going to allow you to pass variables to your app on deployment and work with them locally. So just to show you how it works, we're gonna do flask debug and we're gonna come back to that app and we're going to import that library. So from dot uh, env import load.env. All right, and then below here, we're going to do load.env um, and I forgot import OS. So what OS, OS does here is let us access this file through the Flask app. All right. So what's going to happen here is that we're going to get environmental variables .app config. Then we're going to select debug. Now um, what this is is that this is the object and then this is like a property of that object or a variable that is part of it. I need to encapsulate that in a string. Then we're going to call OS, then dot en beyond dot git. And then we're going to do flask underscore debug. So if we want to get 
this variable or like a secret key from the .env file, we need to get it specifically like word for word, call that the specific line and then pass it to the app. And now we don't need debug equals true because that's just a parameter of app when we're running the method run. So what's happening is this object is being called by a script and then we're calling a function run the server and then there's these like properties inside of it that we can kind of observe. All right, so um, just to show you that it works, All right? And it runs, great. All right, I'm gonna add some other stuff. We're gonna do pip install flask cores and then uh, pip install G unicorn. So um, later on in the series, we're gonna use some React code and we're gonna call it API. Um, when you call it API, you're going to use something called cores or cross origins. Um, it's just a web standard to make sure that you're passing correct headers to the back end and the API. It's just it's pretty much necessary so you can pass data back and forth between applications um, without it being like kind of middleman attacked. And then you have G unicorn and G unicorn is like production code for the Flask app to deploy through. All right, we're going to go ahead and update the app with those packages. So we're going to do from flask cores, import cores, and then we're going to also have, um, that's it. Um, and then we want to encapsulate the app. We can actually move that there and then call cores around the app. And then so what's happening here is that we call the libraries cross origins and now the app will accept cross origin uh, API requesting. And that should just make sure that works. So when you deploy your API and you're deploying it for a front end, you want to have cores essentially for that. Uh, now here, I'm going to pip freeze the requirements uh, what that means is that my virtual environment, if we, um, I think it's pip list, if I remember. Yeah. So um, I installed all those packages and they're just like a bunch of libraries that are libraries of code for you to kind of run the server, right? Um, you need to save the requirements. So on deployment, the server at Google knows what to install when you do the deployment. All right, so what we'll need here is the YAML file. Dot YAML, and then we're going to do runtime Python 39. So Python 3.9, entry point G unicorn dot B dot port app. App. All right, and then you're gonna go back to your env flask file and then do port equals 808. So that's a good point for So Google needs this YAML file to deploy uh, that I'll explain a, li a little bit on. All right, so you create a flask app and you're gonna have to deploy on Google. And that means you have to go to Google and create an account and then go to Google Cloud and then create a new project. I already created a project, um, create new project, test project to create. Okay, in the upper left, it's going to spin here. Um, you would just select the project to like go to the project dashboard. And this just kind of shows like some deployments I've already made. Um, this information is going to just help you later on. So, all right. That's done. All right, now we need the Google uh, CLI. So if you type into Google CLI, uh, you should get something like this. You click here and what you'll see is you're gonna click to the relevant, you know, if you're on Linux, go here. If you're on Ubuntu, go here. If you're on Mac, follow these instructions. I'm on Windows. So what we're gonna do is click the installer. Okay, download the installer. Uh, here, you don't need to do any of this. It's just screen reader for accessibility. And then if you want to help Google improve their CLI, I agree to the terms. You select um, what you want this installed to. Do you click yes? Yep. 
and then you'll install. I'm not going to install this in front of you because I already have it, but it's just going to be like a green loading bar and that's pretty much it. Um, so once that is installed, uh, what it did was essentially install a version of Python 3.9. That's what Google is using. Now we're going to go ahead and it will ask you to do a git cloud init. So if you go back to the terminal here, um, you want to check that we have Google Cloud first, of course. Just type in Google Cloud help. There we go. The help showed up. So it's just giving you some basic, like how the command line works. Just going to cancel out of that, but we're going to Google init. That means to initialize. Um, I can't show this process, but what will happen here is that it's going to ask for your email. This is my email. And then it's going to ask you for a password and authentication. So you're going to go through uh, a login process and then it's going to connect your account with the Google Cloud account. And that's going to ask you to reselect the project. So I'm going to reinitialize the configuration. So I'm going to click one. All right, um, here I can log into another account by doing this by pressing two, but I'm going to press my email again because I don't want to create a whole new account to show you how it works. And then I'm going to select a project. I've created a ton of projects. I'm going to select um, actually project six here, which is the Python lecture series that we're doing. And then finally, uh, it's configured, it's done. So anytime we're deploying here, I'm deploying through this specific account. Like if you're working for a company, they'll give you an email address, you'll work through that account, and then you'll deploy through there, and then it should be pretty straightforward. All right, back to the next step. After you install the CLI, we are going to then set up for deployment. And what this means is that we're going to uh, create a Docker file. And then um, from, this is Google's code, is that you're gonna have from Python.3. And then you're gonna have a copy the local code. So what this means is that this code in your terminal is going to be copied from the Docker file and put onto the Google server. Then you're going to run these commands. We have run pip install, upgrade pip, and then requirements. So if you don't have this text file, you get an error on deployment. And then here we're going to have a run command. So this came with commented code to explain things, but G Unicorn's a tool where when you deploy on the cloud, you're using a CPU and a CPU has cores. Cores, So you could like limit your server to only use like one or two cores to save resources, for example. And then it can kind of like increase the number of cores if it gets like more requesting users and stuff. So here it's going to call G Unicorn. It's going to use that port. It's going to use one worker, have eight threads. So like one CPU, eight workers, eight threads, I mean, um, excuse me. And then the app call. All right. And then we're going to need a uh, Docker uh, dot Docker dot Docker ignore file. What this file is, is that basically we have a virtual environment and we have this .env file and we have, um, we got dot .requirements. So in this env, when we run Python code, it compiles Python and it creates like memory saving caches, just saving memory and the Docker file itself. So what's happening is that when you deploy, we're, we're literally just copying, we're going to copy this, director, this directory, right? Uh, we don't want to copy everything, like the readme file, we don't want to, um, docker file, we don't want to copy itself. And um, that is how you prepare for deployment. So now that you have this set up, we're going to do a Google Cloud run. So let me just zoom in a little bit here. I'm actually just clear this. All right, so it's going to ask me to name the service. So when you're deploying, you're going to use resources from Google and then they call it a service and that's how they track what resources you're using. Now here it's going to ask you to select a specific region. So for example, if my app is deployed in the East Coast and I have users in Australia, they will experience latency. 
Um, this is a trick you could solve with load balancing if you're like in DevOps and things like that. So now I'm just going to select the East Coast. All right. It's going to say allow on, uh, you're going to say yes to this. Um, there's a way where you can like log in to the back of the API and you can just have no and set up security features just for the sake of this video. And if you're doing a startup, we're just going to get this started and say yes. Okay. We had our first error, but I planned this. And all that happened was your Docker file was not capitalized. That's it. That's all that happened here. Um, this is a very common error that people tend to get because they forget the Docker file needs to be a capital D and several lowercase d. We're going to do that again. Test 33. Uh, then we're going to say yes. All right. And we're on our way to deployment. Okay, perfect. So it worked. It said done. Here's the test revision. Um, it's going to serve 100% of the traffic. We're going to hold down control and then left click. We're going to open that up in our browser to the left. And there it is. It's live. Hello world. So now we're going to go back to Google uh, console. Now here, uh, if I'm in the correct library, uh, sorry, correct project, project like uh, Python lecture. Um, here on the left, you'll have this navigation. You're going to go down to Cloud Run, and it's telling you what is running. The service is running test, and that our test is running, and we're accepting stuff. Um, we're going to go back, and we're going to go back to the dashboard, and you can see here that I made an API call for deployment. It's going to charge you one cent to do that. So, uh, anyways, we're going to go back and go back to Cloud Run. I'm going to select test. So here we just click test and then we click delete here. That's how we remove it. So yeah, that's it. Um, you can also do it from the command line. I have that in the blog post. Um, so that's just how you make a uh, flask app deployment. So other than that, I just want to say uh, thank you for watching, uh, subscribe, like the video. Also, a uh, short advertisement here. I run a consulting service, so please check out my website. I have a free trial. If you need help with a small business or startup or just try and get an app constructed, I do UX consulting, brand consulting, and product consulting, so that's just my plug. Thank you for your time.